yeah, a culture science center above the clouds. That's pretty exciting. This is Community Matters, and the handsome young man is Richard Ha. Welcome to the show, Richard. Hey, how's it? How's it? So um, what can I say? Um, you're always busy. Uh, you were busy uh, in Hamakua, Hamakua Farms, um, mm -hmm. and you were a public, you know, a, a public person who discussed exactly the issues, especially the energy issues on the farm. Uh, and then we spoke not too long ago about geothermal, and you were passionate about geothermal. And now it's something else. It's like, you know, R Richard is always doing something. You are a community person. You are, um, you know, committed to causes. And I'm sure this is not the last one. But let's talk about this one. This is the Culture Science Center Above the Clouds. And I will, uh, let's just assume for a moment and when we say above the clouds, we mean high atop Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa. Am I right about that? Uh, yeah, and, and we're talking mid-level. It needs to be above the clouds so that you're above the, when you're looking above the clouds, you can see the stars. When you're below the clouds, you can see the rain. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's now right. you, you've been thinking about this for some time because you wrote to me about it a, a couple of weeks ago. And yeah. then uh, there was an article um, in a, uh, I guess, a journal in, was it Germany? Uh, and uh, you learned, oh no, it was on the mainland, yeah? Uh, from a woman. Um, and she gave you an idea. She confirmed your idea, right? Can you talk about that article? Uh, uh, you, <laughs> you know, we, we ran across this uh, PDF and, and it just happened last week, you know, where we were trying to look for uh, a duplication of a hard cover, um, 120 page uh, uh, study. It was a master's thesis with this uh, lady that came to Hawaii and did, did um, her master's thesis on uh, essentially what is what we see as a culture center of the clouds. So I was trying to get it duplicated because this is a hard copy. Took it down to my friend Nimer Tomimi's office and had you know asked him to do it. And and his um, the lady that was going to do it was <laughs> she was really smart. She just Googled it and up popped the you know this this uh, uh, it, it it was online and I, I had no idea and nobody had any idea. And at this point, we're not even sure if the university had a copy, like it doesn't look like it. So what we're trying to do now is trying to, uh, first of all, find out if uh, it's possible to do this. And if it's not, then we take the next step because it was designed to be on the present Hale Pohaku um, location. Oh, the article is about Hale Pohaku. The article is about Hawaii, yes. even though I remember now that the woman who wrote the article is um, she's European. And yeah, for Vienna. She wrote it she, as a, yeah, she wrote it as yeah. a master's thesis for yes. at the University of um, of Vienna Technical School. Um, yeah, in, yeah. In, Institute in, of Technology. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And they sponsored it, so you know uh, it's not surprising that that not very many people know about it because it was instigated on that side. Yeah. Well, let's let's uh, let's get um, you know the foundation here. Um, what is a cultural a culture science center, and what does the article say about it, and how does that comport with what you've been thinking about anyway? Yeah, well, it's exactly you know 120 pages of background as as well as the architectural drawings for that actual building. So when, when we first saw it, I almost fell over because it was pretty much what we had in our minds. But, you know, and we were told, you, you need to have something solid. You can't just come and say, we have an idea. Everybody has ideas. So we, we were thinking we'd have to spend, you know, a million or two to, to do something like this. And then it just fell into our laps last week. Interesting. And you never talked to her. No, no, it, it just this is all brand new. Just trying to yeah. figure out, yeah. 
So, but my, my question is, what is a culture science center? Uh, <clears throat> what, is, what is the culture? Is it Native Hawaiian culture? What culture is it? Yeah, it, it is Native Hawaiian culture. And it's, um, it, it, it's meant to, to bring together Hawaiian culture and science. But, but, you know, so that's what it's meant to do. But our, our uh, what, what we want to do is use it to, to further Kiki education, uh, like elementary school. So what we would like to do is build this center and have kids go out from elementary school, all of the elementary schools on the Big Island, every single student, and get them to look through, you know, small telescopes and, and see the stars. And if they get uh, inspired, maybe they want to become an uh, 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 astronomy, uh, so the science you're talking about is astronomy. Uh, it, yeah, and it, the reason for it is because you know when you're out there, that's what you see is the st the stars, yeah. And the thing about it is the st you know that resource is free. All you got to have is eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so you can look up and spend as much time as you want there. But if you inspire the kids and they have to, uh, and and they want to pursue that idea because they're inspired. What will happen is they'll they don't have to go into math, and that that math is what kids need for uh, future generations. That's the skills they need, that because our basic idea is 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 what can we do to keep Hawaiian uh, uh, kids from leaving Hawaii to find jobs on the mainland. So we would rather keep them here. Yeah. So that's that's really the objective. Okay. So. Um... The question, I suppose, is uh, even before we get to, you know, permits and money, which is going to be critical, um, is there an appetite for this? Because, you know, I think it's kind of a, in conflict on the Big Island among the Native Hawaiian community as to whether we should have astronomy at all. Yeah, but, but you know, if you start to ask yourself the question, where, what do we want? to lead for future generations. And if you ask yourself that question, then, then, the, then, then, then everybody starts to focus on uh, the same thing. You know, what, one generation from now is 25 years from now. What, what do we want to do, our generation? What do we want to do to position themselves to be in a better position? So we're not in, in you know, we, we're, we're all on the same side. You know, it may seem like we're not, but we are all on the same side because we're not talking about building more telescopes. We're talking about building a facility to respect the Hawaiian culture, to teach kids, and then you do all the other things that's necessary. You make sure that it's uh, sustainable, so you got to charge so much money. Uh, and if you make money at it, then you can put it into a fund to to to... Uh, uh, support Kiki education, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that, that's the main objective. Okay, but let me ask you, I mean, do, do you support um, the, the telescopes, uh, for example, the 30 meter telescope on Mauna Kea? Are, are you um, pro or con on that issue? Oh, I, I'm a supporter of, of the 30 meter telescope, but I don't think right now the discussion really is about the 30 meter telescope. They've done everything that they need to do. They follow the law and stuff like that. I, I don't think it's that at, at all. It's more about respect and, and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So what I'm basically saying, hey, you know what? Why don't we do, do a culture center above the clouds? And from there, we can share with the rest of the, words, uh, with the, rest of the world um, what Hawaiians knew for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. you, know, and, and... <laughs> you know, and- You know, there's a science center just um, up the hill, you know, from Hilo. I uh, forget the name of it right. This is sort of a, it's part of the the whole astronomy facility at, at UH Hilo. Oh, Imi Loa, are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And that is, now is, is that what you're talking about or is that less or more than what you're talking about? <laughs> it's essentially something like that, but the physical location is up on the, biggest mountain in the whole world, in the middle of the biggest ocean in the whole world. And it's a Hawaiian mountain, you know, and from there, 
you could broadcast to the whole world um essentially uh, uh the spirit of aloha mm -hmm. and you, you know the way the way I, I, i'm in uh kikuhi kanaka uli's halau ohia so i'm picking this up from learning from that class you know so what, I, what i've come to is that hawaiians used to have a um, physical science and ecology kind of uh, economic system. They didn't have bicycles or anything like that. Yeah, so everything was basically physical science and ecology. So what they did, which was real interesting to see, is they had a culture that was um, that had guardrails, and the guardrails are set up to balance the uh, uh, resources against the needs. And, and the way they did it was they, they, they treated all living things like divine brethren. So human beings were, were no better than every other living thing. So in the culture, that's why you have the bird people, the fish people, the tree people. So they're all related. So, so when you look at that, that really is the essence of what it is to, what, what is aloha. <laughs> take me on a on a trip, okay. uh, Richard. Take me on a case study. Let's say I start in Hilo, okay, and I want to get up to the the, the culture science center, um, and I, I I get up there somehow. You're going to tell me how, and I walk in the door. Tell me what it's like when I go inside. Yeah. So 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 you drive up the road. You come to the uh, the Saddle Road Junction, and and right there, you you would go to a facility and you get uh, a briefing on what's uh, going on. But really, what you're doing is you're you in the interest of safety, you want to go up to the mountain in 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 let's say a hydrogen bus because it won't be tomorrow we do this. <laughs> let's say you go up with a hydrogen bus, yeah. That's perfect for the Big Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so you take a bus up there, mid-level, and you go to that facility, which is to the east of the present Halepohaku. You drive in, but there's no more cars up there. It's, it's just buses. Yes, you have to get on the bus. And the reason you do that is for safety, because you, you want to make sure a four-wheel drive bus, maybe, yeah? Four-wheel drive hydrogen bus, mm -hmm. highly trained uh, uh, bus drivers, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you go up there, and the first thing you do is you, you, you kind of look at it and you say, and you get this look and feel. So we've been working with uh, Nelson Makua because he, he, he's a really good uh, artist that, that can give you a, a, a sense of place. So we've worked with him. He, he drew up something I almost fell over. I'm like, holy smokes. And, and it just really gives you that feeling. So then you go in there and part of it is underground. Yeah, so it's not sticking way up in the air. Um, but in it, you know, there, there's a, uh, a, a huge facility uh, that's that's um, big enough so that when you go in there, you feel like it's uh, uh, um, how should I say? It's it's got to be big enough to be respectful. It's got to got to give the look and feel of having the uh, so that you feel like the moral authority of what happens on Mauna Kea happens there, mm -hmm. even if you're not on the summit because the summit is way really sensitive, mm -hmm. but there. Um, that's essentially what it is. And then there's the, all kinds of facilities and, you know, uh, uh, stuff like that. Well, give me, give me some examples of exhibits that you would see there. I mean, if I'm thinking, you know, just given your adventures in energy, I'm thinking there'd be something about geothermal, would there? Uh, and I suppose there'd be something about a lot about astronomy and there'd be, um, you know, the Native Hawaiian connection to the mountains. And, and and you know the the earth and so forth. Um, what 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 kind of exhibits do you imagine would be there, Richard? It, you know, so so essentially, what we'd be doing is teaching uh, what the Hawaiian culture was about. So then, when people come over there, they get exposed to what the Hawaiian culture was. And 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 essentially, what you're doing is you're spreading the the, the uh, information to the rest of the world. That that would be a place uh, to do that. So that that's you know um, whatever it takes to do that you know this 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 uh, 
uh, plan here is it doesn't have to be exactly like what's in the plan. It can be changed in, uh, according to what everybody feels like would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot of things that we can move around. But um, yeah, so there would be places What, what does the plan say? What, what does the plan contemplate? What, what is the, you know, the, the paper that uh, this uh, European student wrote about it? What does it say? I mean, if, if I want to sort of imagine what's in there, um, I guess some people have been imagining it. What do they imagine? Yeah, so, so you know, it, it doesn't come stick out of the ground very much. A lot of it is underground. It's basically about four stories mm -hmm. of different uh, levels, different things, maybe um, uh, like in Imiloa, do they, they have a planetarium in there. So you could go in there and you could show anything you wanted. There could be a place where you teach uh, uh, even even hula, how, how it's related to mm. uh, Hawaiian culture and then learn everything about Hawaiian culture that you could possibly learn. You know? So uh, it would be a pipeline for the University of Hawaii Language School and as well as uh, the community college. And, and uh, we would, uh, I would imagine you'd have a place for uh, hula to be taught or to, I, I'm not really sure it's it's pretty much we'd have to ask the hula people what what would they like to see what would be appropriate for, for them so a lot, a lot of these things it has to be done in in, in, in um, coordination with uh, folks that are uh, um, that would be involved in this yeah okay yeah well let me ask you who would that be is there an organization you have in mind would would you be active in that organization? Would you be an officer, director, what have you? Well, you know, I, I, I wouldn't mind, but uh, there are a lot of other folks, you know, so this culture center above the clouds has been an idea of, of this group, well, which I'm, you know, founding member of, uh, I'm, I'm a board member. And uh, they articulated that a, a while back when, when they were going through the comprehensive uh, uh, not comprehensive management plan, but uh, uh, when uh, Judge Amano had that hearing, you know, so at that time, myself and, and uh, uh, Keahi Warfield, who's the president of Pueo, um, we went to those hearings and we sat there every single day um, and articulated that. And not only that, um, Kalepa Babayan, the, uh, a master navigator, you know, um, he was a strong advocate for this culture center about the cloud. As a matter of fact, when he was on the worldwide voyage, he flew back up to Hawaii to testify and then flew back down. You know, so, so um, and, and I asked Kalepa, I said, Kalepa, hey, if we do something like this, what do you suggest should be the name? He said, the first thing he said was Mauna Honua. And then whatever the description is, so we've been using culture center above the clouds so that everybody could understand that we were talking above the clouds, not under the clouds. But it didn't have to be that, you know. It all it needed to be is a description that everybody agree on. So it would, I'm sure, it would have to have culture in it. Um, but you know, but but that's what uh, he suggested, Mauna Honua. What and does the that, reason, what does that mean, Richard? Mauna it, it, means mountain, yeah. Like, yeah, uh, what does Honua mean? You know, it's, it's a that's what the and because he's a navigator, mm -hmm. the navigators look at Mauna Kea as, as this big. Um, I, I I I don't know how to describe it, but that that's how he, as a navigator, looks at uh, Mauna Kea, Mauna Honua. Like it's like a. It's, it, it, I, 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 it's a I, special I mountain, a special cultural. Yeah, so for, I, I take for, for it his though, perspective. Have yeah. you cited this? Uh, this, I mean, do you have a hypothetical site where it would go? Would, you know, you talked about the Saddle Road uh, and Pohakaloa. Would, would this yep. be on the Mauna Kea side of the Saddle Road or the Mauna Loa side of the Saddle Road? It's on the Mauna Kea side. You would drive up all the way up to Hale Pohaku, and it's to the left. So it's across Not a the specific road. site in mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we've we've been on the site. We've we've looked around. It's about a quarter of a mile to the west. So when you're there, you're if 
in the evening, afternoon, you're looking at the sunset. Mm -hmm. okay. But then you can't see it from uh, Saddle Road. So it's not intrusive like that. Mm -hmm. So Richard, you know, something I always wondered about, I mean, to me, I see both of those mountains as glorious features in, in the Hawaii landscape. Um, but I, I see them equally glorious. Um, I get the feeling, though, that Mauna Kea may have more relevance than Mauna Loa. Uh, to me, they are equally relevant. But, uh, you know, what, what about the local culture on this? Is, is, is one more uh, sacred than the other? Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know that. Uh, I, the, the main thing I know is that uh, Mauna Kea has been dormant for 4,000 years or so, whereas Mauna Loa is active. Mm. Oh, true, true fact. Uh, okay. So uh, where is, okay, so we now have a handle on who might be involved. Um, where, where would the money come from? Um, what community would support this? I mean, do you expect the Native Hawaiian community in the Big Island, and for that matter, around the state to support this uh, politically and economically? Do you expect the, the legislature would fund it? Do you, uh, you mentioned before that there'd be maybe some kind of admission to go in. Um, uh, how, what, what's the economics? Well, you know, we, we don't know what, what it will cost. We just got that designed last week. Mm -hmm. But uh, just, just the back of the envelope uh, estimation was that it would cost around 33 million. Mm -hmm. So we've already uh, talked to this group from Korea and, you know, we, we, and they wanted to come and talk to us and they gave us a presentation and then um, they wanted to give another presentation because they, they didn't feel like they did a, a, got their message across really well because we're not in Korea. We don't know how well they're, they're known. I mean, they're, they're extremely high level. Everybody knows who they are, except, you know, when you come to Hawaii, we didn't know. So they asked us for another presentation and we, we uh, agreed, but I told them, you know, so let's, let, let's uh, to save you folks some time, this is what our ask is. If, if you want to do this, what our requirement is, is we'd like to have 22 million for exploration, geothermal exploration on the island. And we'd like to have a culture center above the clouds and that would cost 33 million. And then they signed the, the they, they agreed. And we signed a letter of intent in the mayor's office. So whether or not that happens, it's just a letter of intent. Yeah, we're not, we, we'll see how that, that, that happens. And they'll be in town in about a month. So we can have that uh, detail uh, of discussion. But if that doesn't work, you know, it, everybody knows that, that uh, the budget is kind of tight, yeah? Where's the money gonna come from? The university doesn't have that in their budget, just extra. But you know what, I, I bet we could get, uh, you know, like The Rock or Jason Momoa, <laughs> right? The Rock. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, that kind of money. He's not going to be know. good for 50 million now, actually, Richard. <laughs> Maybe, you know, well, it's 30-something 30, 30 million. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure we can get the money privately mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, anyway, that, that's our thought, yeah? If, if, if not, you know... We'll just have to try whatever we can. Yeah. Well, so you mentioned the university and whether or not it, you know, it can participate in the funding, which I imagine it can't. It's under, it's under fiscal stress these days, and I think sure. the, the legislature is actually cutting its budget. But yeah. the question is, um, you know, would the university be part of this? Uh, would the university, you know, which, which has you know enormous educational resources? Uh, would they be involved in the teaching and the study uh, in the in the cultural aspect? You know, the content that, that you deliver uh, at yep. the cultural center, would the university be involved? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and that's the pipeline from the Hawaiian Language School. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's okay. a direct, direct uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the other thing you mentioned that I'd like to follow up on is, is geothermal, because you and I have talked about geothermal a number of times in the past, and I know you support it, and as I do. Um, yeah. And I, I wonder what role geothermal, or for that matter, Richard, renewable energy would play 
um, because um, you know you have been dedicated, passionately dedicated to renewable energy for as long as I know you. And um, uh, don't you think this cultural center would operate on renewable energy and or geothermal uh, as one example of renewable energy, just to you know demonstrate to the people who come that Hawaii is replete with energy resources. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's uh, related, you know, because what we're really looking for is with, with the energy from geothermal as well as uh, cultural center above the clouds, we're looking to, 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 uh, to make a better life for future generations. So 25, you know, let's say a, a child is born today 25 years will be 2046. It's one year after we're supposed to be 100% renewable. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. But, but we have a choice right now. Okay, so let's, let's take a solar, uh, uh, industrial solar project uh, uh, that, that has a 25-year lifespan. So the kid now is 25 years old. That solar array that was built is 25 years old. So now that needs to come down and re be replaced. That's about the life. So in, in that instance, you would have to replace it by bidding for the rare earth metals, minerals. So will the price be higher or lower? I'm pretty convinced that it'll be higher. Mm. Yeah. Well, so, you don't so, know the technology could be better. You know, maybe well, somebody sure. will invent something between now and then that would that would be more efficient, right? And therefore, uh, ultimately cheaper per kilowatt. Yeah, but but uh, technology is not energy. Technology <laughs> makes it more efficient, <laughs> true, but it's not energy. And here's the problem. We're living on a finite planet, yeah? And we're our economic system tells us we have to have exponential growth. Exponential growth on a finite planet is not sustainable. Yeah, so, so, uh, the way I see it, it looks like, okay, so we're, we're going to, um, when, when that child is 25 years old, we got to replace it. The cost is going up. The, the uh, electricity cost is going up versus if we had geothermal, the heat is free and the heat will be free for one to two million years. So which one would you rather have for future generations? I'm thinking geothermal. And then, you know, when we're looking at future generations, you know, talking about culture center above the clouds, mm -hmm. imagine this, you're, um, so, so Hawaiians are leaving the island, you know, to, to go to the mainland. After, after two generations, how, how, how grounded are those children? You know, they know they come from Hawaii, but how grounded are they? They could come to this place and just immediately feel what is Hawaii all about. But it has to be robust. It it, it can't be a, a, an afterthought, and that's why we want something that's you know big and worthy of respect. Well, Richard, because this is what it's about. Is about respect. In the state that aren't there other you know places, uh, cultural centers, and um, you know features and um, uh, museums and the like uh, where Native Hawaiian culture is uh, exhibited. Uh, would this be yeah. this? This wouldn't be the only place for sure. I mean, I'm thinking primarily yeah. of the Bishop Museum here in Honolulu. Um, yeah. That you know, there's a lot of native native Hawaiian culture there. So how how would this work? Uh, you know, in in coordination, if you will, uh, with other museums, exhibits, uh, and cultural centers around the state. Well, you know, I, I, um, we've been having informal. Uh, um, Conversations with Bishop Museum, and and you know just the general concept, they're 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 all in. You know, it, it you, you got to do all the technical stuff, but they I, I could see them fitting in really easily. And and the, what we want to do too is make it separate from the university, make it so so that it doesn't um, um, get caught up in in the politics of it. You know, it's just just do that as as a uh, um, a way to respect the Hawaiian culture and just separate it from, from the uh, management of the mountain and all that stuff. That's very important. It's good that you're yeah. laying the groundwork for that now because that's always a risk when you have potentially competing uh, organizations, even though they're nonprofit and historic and cultural, they can still get into competition. 
Um, and, and one thing you mentioned that I last point I'd like to follow up on is, uh, you know, this is it, it has to be because of the money involved and the permits and so forth. Um, and we want to call it the community. It has to be political. In other words, you have to be politically conscious of how of, of, of the appetite for it and the willingness to spend the money and grant the permits and, you know, and, and champion the project. You, in Hawaii, you always need that. And I know you're well familiar with that. But query, um, are there other are legislators right now today uh, who would champion this project? Uh, who would, um, you know, take a position on it and uh, advance it politically? Um, it's it's very sensitive, right? So so I I I I haven't, you know, it, we got to do it, you know, and it, and if we and we got to do it from from the ground up, because if 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 the the, the people show that they're for it, we won't have any problem with politics, but right now. But there's no volunteer that I can see because it's because it's not clear, yeah. So once we start to make this clear, and it's only been a week, yeah. So once we start to make this clear that this is really about Hawaiian culture and this is really about Hawaiians meeting, you know, then then it's a different, total different uh, discussion. Yeah. Well, it makes a lot of sense, Richard. I mean, pe people are leaving. Uh... Newspaper reported some 12,000 net loss last year. Uh, I don't know if that's COVID or the economy or a combination. Maybe it's the same thing. Um, but Native Hawaiians among them, they are leaving. They are finding lives and occupations and homes elsewhere, building their families elsewhere. And uh, this could be, especially on the Big Island, uh, a, uh, a rallying place, you know, a, a place... Uh, that can offer them, um, you know, a home, a cultural home, if you yeah. will. Um, I hope you can do it. I hope you can find uh, the money. I hope you can find the political will and and support yeah. in the legislature. And uh, and I hope you and I will both live to see the doors <laughs> open, Richard. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You know, I wanted to make one real uh, important point, and that is going to uh, Kikuhi's classes. The first thing you find out that this is not only about Hawaiians, this is about everybody that makes Hawaii home. And that, that is a real important uh, uh, point. Yeah, uh, it's, it's the essence of the state. And yes. although the state changes and certainly the native Hawaiian population and, and the community changes, the fact is we always have to remember it because it is our origin and our special sauce. It's, this is our special sauce you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Richard Ha, who is, a, is active in every which way you can think of, and I do want to follow up on this and all the other things we've talked about. So, Richard, don't leave town. You can run, but you can't hide. We'll find you again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Richard. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.